in this video, we're going to do a comparison to what it's like to stay on BLM land, which is Bureau, Bureau, Bureau of Land Management. That's right. And that's where we're at here. And we're going to compare that to a luxury RV park. So Diane, why don't you take a walk over to your luxury RV park? Right now we're staying for a few days at the Tucson Lazy Days KOA in Tucson, Arizona. And this is what I would call glamping. Or camping, deluxe camping, or pretty much deluxe glamping. What type of hookups do you have? What hookups do I have? I have the sun for solar and everything else I bring in my trailer. So I bring in my own water, I bring in my own holding tanks and everything, and I bring in and take out everything that I have here. So I have to bag out all my trash and everything so it's that type of hookups but I have no cost either this campground didn't cost anything what hookups do you have at this campsite we have full hookups we have sewer we have hose and we have electric so full hookups so Diane how large is your campsite we have a corner campsite which is probably larger than most of them here. They have different types of campsites. They have drive-throughs, they have backups. Um, I would say this is one of the nicer campsites. Well, my campsite is very large. In fact, I have to use a drone to show it to you. So take a look at this. campsite is safe is my campsite safe well there is a fence when you come in and you have to come across the gate and we are out in the middle of nowhere but there is that one sign that says watch out for early for smuggling and illegal aliens but I have not seen a spaceship anywhere so I think I'm safe there how about your campsite is your campsite safe oh extremely safe I mean it's an enclosed campground they do, it's gated, it's fenced, and they're, the workers are constantly roaming the campground, so I don't feel any, you know, any, there'll be any difficulties at all. How, how much distance is there between you and your neighbors and your campsite? Mm -hmm. I would say 10 or more feet between um, the campsites. They're, they're pretty spacious. What is the distance between your campsite? In my campsite, my nearest neighbor is over there and that's over 100 feet. Same thing with a neighbor on that side is 100 feet. The neighbors over there are 500 feet. There's nobody in front of me. And this whole campsite is acres and acres of land and there's probably 20 ERVs here. What amenities are offered when you're out boondocking? We've got some of the best hiking. We've got the largest dog park you've ever been in. We're not far from Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. And if you really want to get international, we're not far from Mexico. It's ugly. So Diane, what amenities are offered at your campsite? Well, this campground, like I say, this is really a deluxe campground. They have two pools, a fitness center, two laundries, um, uh, oh, a pet wash, they have tennis courts, they have a pond, and let's see, um, the tennis court you can also play pickleball, they have horseshoes, 
Some of the campsites even have a little putting green on them. There's a large dog park, plus some of the campsites have their own individual smaller dog park or pet, pet areas if you don't happen to have a dog, if you have a you know outdoor cat or I don't know whatever other animals you travel with. Oh and it has a, a restaurant, a nice store. I think that's about it, but it ha it really includes a lot. If you're boondocking, do you have pet amenities? Well, for the pet owner here, we have the, the largest dog park in any campground. They can go anywhere. They don't even have to be on a leash here. We can walk them without a leash, though Monty always stays on his leash. And Zephyr wanders around. Sometimes she's good and can be off the leash. She lo loves that. Okay, I'll tell you what I like the best about this campsite. The campsite we're on is very spacious. Um, like I said, it has a nice patio, table and chairs, a, a fireplace. It really is spacious and um, plenty of room for our Airstream and for our truck. It's nicely enclosed with bushes. Throughout the park, there are orange trees and lemon trees and grapefruit trees. Unfortunately, we don't have one at our site, but there are bushes with pretty flowers on. There's a small dog area located right behind our campsite. And uh, yeah, the, the campsite or the areas where you put your trailer are all stone. You know, a lot of room for the dogs. I can't really think of anything else, but. Let me tell you what I like best about this campsite. For one thing, you're not on top of your neighbors. It's a totally different experience than going into a private campground or even a state park. You've got this real openness where you feel like you're one with nature. Um, you can get up and take a nice long walk in the morning. You don't have neighbors on top of you, but you do have some neighbors near you, so you're not all alone. There, there's just a lot to this. Um, not too many places can you just come in and pick the spot you want to park in and, and stay there. What I like least about this campsite, being on the corner, there's a lot of traffic. A lot of the kids ride by on their bicycles and just, you know, people walking by with their dogs, especially since we have dogs and our one dog, Monty tends to bark at all the dogs walking by. So for us, you know, I would rather not be on a corner site, especially when the campground is so busy. I would say what I don't like about this campground is that it's so isolated. There's really not any stores here. Even if you go up to the town of Alo, there's not a lot there. There's maybe a little IGA store or something. But there's really not any restaurants or very much in this area to take advantage of commercially. For that, you get a real rugged feeling and, and a very nice and uh, outdoor experience, which is really enjoyable. It's very quiet here. We get a little bit of noise from the traffic on the road, but if we don't want that, we could have just gone a little farther back into the campground and we wouldn't hear anything. So there's a lot of advantages to this. Well, yeah, to get to the campground wasn't too bad. It's not right off the expressway. You have to kind of, you know, go up and down a few streets. And um, I, don't, I wouldn't say it was hard to get to, though. This camp, this site wasn't too hard to get to. I mean, it was, it was a drive. And, you know, we had to come from Phoenix probably three, three hours of a drive from Phoenix. The most difficult thing for this campground for us was actually locating it because it's not on an address. So it was hard to put into the GPS. You had to put a location between where two roads met and then the instructions said go about a mile and a half from there, cross a bridge, and the campground is right across on the right-hand side. So it was a little tricky to kind of navigate that part, kind of like a scavenger hunt. But once we crossed that bridge and figured out the campground was here, it was pretty easy to find. And then... You, there's, I don't know, 
how many campsites in here that you could choose from. There's a lot of options here that you could have. You just really want to find a spot that fits your rig, that just in an, puts you in an orientation that your solar works good, and then you know you look for a camp, uh, a fire pit or something, and that tells you it's, it's probably a campsite. Would I come back? Yes, I would. I would next time. I think we would actually call them, and I would recommend calling them for a site. Randy Book Guys Online, and some of you may know that when you book online, they may say, well, we only have one site available, which is probably one of the more expensive ones. And for this campground, they do have what looks like a lot of sites that are a bit cheaper than the site we were, that we're on right now. So, yeah, I would recommend if you're looking into this, I, I would recommend that you look into staying here if you like the concept of deluxe camping or glamping. Um, but I would call and make your reservation instead of booking online. I would definitely probably come back here again because I think there's more in the uh, National Monument that we could explore that we didn't have time to do while we're here. Um, I also would definitely do boondocking like this again. I think it's a very enjoyable way to spend a few days. Well, we hope you enjoyed this look at boondocking versus glamping and hope to get a little bit of a different idea of what each offers. When you're camping, there's a lot of opportunity out there to do pretty much anything you want. You can park in the desert and have no hookups and have just as good a time as you can coming to a campground like this and spending $85 a night and having everything here, including food delivered to your campground. That's true. That's true. And I, like I said before, this is probably the extreme of glamping. At least for us. Yeah, at least for us. Usually I'm thrilled if we get sewer in addition to water and electric. So yeah, this is extreme for us. But some people enjoy that. Yeah. And they don't mind the cost at all. So. Right. Apparently, because this place is pretty full. Yeah, and some people stay here. You can come and stay long term. You know, we talked to one, one lady, and they're going to be here for three months. Well, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. And hit the bell for notifications so you get notified when we post new videos. We post new videos on a weekly basis, and we'd love to have you follow along in our journey. And if you have stayed at this campground, remember the Tucson Lazy Day KOA in Tucson, Arizona. Leave us a comment on how you like the campground. And for ours and many others information, um, sites of interest that you found in the area. And, you know, share them with everyone. Yep. All right. Well, I guess until the next time. We will see you down the road. Take care, everybody. Bye.